The problem we will be solving can be found in the book Sears and Szymanski's University Physics with Modern Physics, 12th edition, page 173, problem 5.65. A block with mass M1 is placed on an inclined plane with slope angle alpha and is connected to a second hanging block with mass M2 by a cord passing over a small frictionless pulley. The coefficient of static friction is mu sub s and the coefficient of kinetic friction is mu sub k. A. Find the mass m2 for which the black m1 moves up the plane at constant speed once it's set in motion. B. Find the mass m2 for which the black m1 moves down the plane at constant speed once it's set in motion. C. For what range values of m2 will the black remain at rest if they are released from rest? So now let us proceed with part A. Find the mass M2 for which the block M1 moves up the plane at constant speed once it's set in motion. Here I have a representation of that system. Okay? So, as the question says, find the mass M2 for which the block M1 moves up the plane. This is mass M1. I'm going to label it M1 because that's mass M1. And this right here is mass 2. Okay? So, if this mass is going to move up the plane, you should remember Newton's second law. Okay? So, this implies that the net force is pointing up the plane because this object will accelerate up the plane. Because this is moving at constant speed, this can also remind you of Newton's first law. Newton's first law states that if the sum of the forces is equal to zero, the object will either remain at rest or move at constant speed, meaning it will not accelerate. In this case, we have that it will move at constant speed, so this object, this mass here, will not accelerate although we know the net force is directed up the inclined plane since we know the net force is directed up the inclined plane we can also deduct from this that friction force will be acting opposite the net force that means it will be acting towards the left friction will be acting towards the left so Let's draw a free body diagram here of, of both of these bodies, beginning with M1, which is mass 1. Okay, so I'm here, I'm not going to draw the inclined plane, I'm going to draw mass 1. Okay, so mass 1, we know we have we have here the weight of mass 1 coming down from its center of mass okay it's coming straight down pointing towards the center of the earth perpendicular to the incline we have the normal force so right here I'm gonna draw this perpendicular to the incline the normal force this is the normal force okay and this is of course M1G. Over here we have this tension T acting up and parallel to the inclined plane. So I will draw this force going that way. Now we'll call it tension T. Okay. We also have this contact force between M1 and the inclined plane which is the friction force now we know the friction force will be directed down the inclined plane because the black will move up the inclined plane or the net force is directed up the inclined plane so we will draw here this force here which is the friction force I'm going to put it lowercase f for friction or fk for kinetic friction because we know it's kinetic. Why? Because it's in motion. Okay. 
So this is a free body diagram for this mass M1. Let us not forget this is inclined to the horizontal and we should not forget alpha. We should not forget alpha. I'm going to put alpha right there. Okay? So before we proceed with a Newton's equation in both x and y direction, let's draw let's draw this second block here, which is this one. I'm going to draw it right here. Okay? And this is mass M2. So mass M2 has a component of force going down from its center of mass toward the center of the earth. It's directed towards the center of the earth or downward. And this is the mass times the acceleration due to gravity will give us that weight. We also have this tension. And because there is no friction in this pulley, because there's no friction in that pulley, the tension here and here will be the same. So we can put here tension T. Now the next step is to choose a coordinate system. What will we call what will we call up, down, left, and right? Or the positive x, positive y direction. I'm gonna choose everything that's moving clockwise, positive, counterclockwise, negative. Okay. Since this is accelerating downward because the system is moving this way clockwise, I will call the direction of acceleration positive. And of course, this will be positive. Before we proceed, I want you to take a look at the free body diagram here for block A. We have the normal force which is perpendicular to the inclined plane. We have the component of tension parallel to the plane. And we have kinetic friction opposite to the net force or downward. And of course we have the weight of the block coming from the center of mass. We will now we will now draw an incline right here just to help us decompose some forces into their individual directions or x and y directions. Okay? I am again going to draw these forces, the weight, the normal force, we have the tension right here, the tension T, and of course we have this way, kinetic friction. Now this component of weight we're going to split it into both parallel and perpendicular components to the plane. This means we can draw a line like this and from trigonometry and similar angles we know that this alpha right here is equal to this alpha right here. Okay? And that if we want to get the component of weight in the x and y direction. Of course we know this is x, this is y because this is how we chose it. The component of weight in the x direction, okay, we look at this magnitude. This force vector has a magnitude mass 1 times the acceleration due to gravity or m1g. And if we multiply this by the sine of alpha will give us this force this force component. So this will be M1 G sine alpha and of course the other one will be M1 G cosine alpha. The reason is because if we multiply the magnitude 
of this force vector times the cosine of this angle, it will give us the projection adjacent to the angle. And of course, adjacent will be this one, which is of course perpendicular to the inclined plane. Now, we are going to implement Newton's law in the y direction. In the y direction. Beginning with the y direction for this specific box right here. We have the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal. Okay, we have the normal force, which is positive, it's pointing up, it's positive. Normal force. A minus, well, we have this component of of weight which is perpendicular to the inclined plane and is given one is given by the component m1gy which is m1g cosine alpha so this is minus m1g cosine of alpha and of course this is equal to zero because there is no acceleration in the y or perpendicular direction to the plane now we're gonna sum all the forces in the x direction okay and we said that everything moving clockwise is positive that means this tension T is directed towards positive x-axis so positive T the component of the weight here parallel to the plane is directed negative is going down because we have of course a, co a component going up and one going down like this so of course that component parallel to the plane will be given by M1GX or M1 G sine data so minus m1 g sine of not data alpha and of course the kinetic frictional force will be given by mu sub k times the normal force before we proceed here let's solve for the normal force in the first equation so if we add here m1 g cosine to both sides of the equation of course we will get that the normal force is equal to m1 g cosine of alpha now that we know this is the normal force we will multiply the normal force times the coefficient of kinetic friction mu k and since we know that the kinetic friction of force is directed down the incline it will be negative so we have minus mu k times the normal force which is m1g cosine of alpha equals zero this is Newton's first law because the system will not accelerate it will move at constant speed right here right under these equations here we can draw mass 2 and of course we have the force coming down from the center of mass which is going to be the weight m2g and of course we have tension going upward we said that everything moving clockwise is positive so if this mass will will accelerate clockwise or down we know this is positive because we chose the direction of acceleration to be positive. Applying Newton's first law, we get that the sum of the forces in the y direction, there is only one direction here. We got that minus t because the tension is directed now towards the negative sense plus mass 2 times acceleration due to gravity will give us the weight is equal to zero. So now we have these key equations this one and this one right here these key equations from the first incline we have here the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to the tension minus m1g sine alpha minus mu k m1g cosine alpha equals zero for the second block we have the sum of the forces in the y direction minus the tension plus m2g which is the weight is equal to zero. So let's proceed in the next page.
I'm going to rewrite here the equations. We have T minus M1G sine alpha minus mu sub K M1G cosine alpha equals zero. This is the first equation we have from the inclined plane. The second equation we have from the second block is minus T plus M2G equals zero. Okay? We have two equations here which we can solve algebraically. Now to solve these equations algebraically you can add tension here on both sides so we add tension here on both sides for the second equation we have that the tension is equal to mass 2 times acceleration to the gravity or the weight of the second block <clears throat> now that we know what is tension we can substitute it here in the first equation then we will have m2g minus m1g sine alpha minus mu k m1g cosine alpha equals zero <clears throat> the question says find the mass m2 for which the block m1 moves up the plane at constant speed <clears throat> we know this will be moving at constant speed because the sum of the forces is zero <clears throat> now let's find that mass m2 so we are asked to solve here algebraically for M2. To solve for M2, we can add on both sides M1G sine alpha and mu sub k M1G cosine alpha. And of course, we can divide both sides of the equation by G, the acceleration due to gravity. <coughs> Doing that, we get that M2 will stay on the left side. Equals on the right side, we will send this term and this term. M1 sine alpha plus mu sub k M1 cosine alpha. The reason we, ha we don't have any g's here is because g is a common factor, so we divide the whole equation by g. This implies that if we go to another planet, another orbiting body, this mass will not uh, depend on the acceleration due to gravity on that body. So this is the answer to part A. Mass M2 will equal the mass M1 multiplied by the sine of alpha plus mu sub k, the coefficient of kinetic friction, times mass 1 times cosine of alpha. Now we proceed with part B. Find the mass M2 for which the black moves down the plane at constant speed once it's set in motion. This is the same question. The only thing is that the block will now move, we can go back here to our diagram, the block will now move down the inclined plane. This implies the net force is directed down the inclined plane. And this also implies that kinetic frictional force will be directed up the inclined plane or towards the positive direction that we have chosen. The reason why is because as we know, Frictional force always acts opposite the net force. So if the net force is directed downward, this mass will accelerate downward, friction upward, and it will move at constant speed. So the equations will be the same. The only thing is that instead of mu sub k m1g cosine alpha being negative, it will be positive because now kinetic friction will be directed up the inclined plane while all the other forces remain in the same direction. So I put a plus here. We can go to our equation here and put a plus here. Since this does not alter anything, okay, I'm gonna put here this is the answer to part A. Part B I'll put the answer right here. I'm gonna put a plus sign right there. Okay? I'm going to put a plus sign right there because this kinetic frictional force is now directed up the inclined plane. Plus. Now, I can do the same thing. I can divide both sides of the equation by G because G is a common factor. I can add 
on both sides M1G sine alpha and subtract on both sides mu sub k M1G cosine alpha. We get that M2 is equal to M1 sine alpha minus mu sub k M1 cosine alpha. And just like part A, the mass will not depend on the gravitational field. It will not depend on the acceleration of the gravitational field. As you see, G has canceled. So the answer to part A is M2 equals M1 sine alpha plus mu sub k M1 cosine alpha. And the answer to part B is M2 is equal to M1 sine alpha minus mu sub k M1 cosine alpha. These will be the values M1 and M2. I mean, M, M2 should have here that the black has an F-force upward, or the system has an F-force upward. And this right here, if the system has an F-force downward. So now we can proceed with part C. So for part C, I'm going to draw another inclined plane. I'm going to draw the same system. Okay? The same system. Now the only thing is that the free body diagram I will draw it right on top of the picture we have here. Okay, this is M2, this is M1. Same idea. We have the normal force, the component of weight coming from the center of mass, M1G. We have the tension T going this way. And of course, for this one, we have tension T going up, the same tension T and mass 2 coming from the center of mass of this body here, mass 2 times the acceleration of gravity and of course this angle is alpha relative to the horizontal now the idea is the same, we will, decom we will decompose this force vector here to its perpendicular and parallel components to the plane and this is of course alpha Now, part C says, for what range values of M2 will the blacks remain at rest if they are released from rest? What range values? So we will have two values. We'll have a minimum and a maximum value. This is the same idea. We will implement Newton's first and second law. I mean, Newton's first law. And the idea is the same. In first case, in the first case, Static friction will, and I say static friction is because the system will remain at rest. If it moves at constant speed, it's kinetic friction because it's moving. Although, in this case right here we have that it will remain at rest, this is static friction. So, static friction will in one case be directed upward, the other case static friction will be directed down the inclined plane. In those range values of that mass, um, the system will remain at rest. So we have to find which values of M2 will this now exceed the net force of these range values. The idea is the same. We will draw. Okay, let's start with this one. It's more easier. Everything that's that has the tendency to move down this way will be positive okay we don't know which way he's moving well in this case we do know that it's not moving but it does have the tendency to move that's why we need to solve for this value of m2 if this were to move downward we have the tension t is negative t plus mass 
from the acceleration to the gravity equals zero. We can solve here for t. We got that t equals m2g. M2g. Okay. Now let's go here. I'm gonna draw. I'm not gonna draw static friction because we will have static friction both downward and upward. I'm just gonna draw two equations because the answer will turn out to be looking up like just like the um, ones we had before A and B just directed with opposite sense towards each other now the sum of the forces in the X direction here some of the forces in the X direction well tension T is positive here tension T is positive so have T minus the component of weight is negative is always pointing down the inclined plane so that will be what M1G sine alpha so now we're going to assume that static friction is going also down the inclined plane so we have minus mu sub s times the normal force we know that the normal force is opposite to this component of weight perpendicular to the inclined plane which is given by M1G cosine alpha the sum of these forces is equal to zero okay this is case one case two will be the same the tension will be in the same direction the component of weight will be in the same direction parallel to the plane directed downward M1G sine alpha now static friction will no longer be facing this way no, no longer will be directed downward it now will be directed upward or to the positive x direction that we have chosen plus mu sub s and 1g cosine is equal alpha. To zero okay so now since we know t is equal to m2g we can substitute m2g into both equations and solve algebraically for m2 to find for which um, range values of n2 will the system remain at rest <clears throat> we can do that in the next page algebraic okay so we have here equation 1 and 2 we know that t we saw for t t is equal to the m2g so we have here that t equals m2g okay T equals M2G. And we're going to substitute that into the first equation, which we have. So now we have M2G minus M1G sine alpha minus mu sub S M1G cosine alpha equals zero. Okay? This is for the first equation, first case. For the second one, we have... M2G minus M1G sine alpha plus mu sub S M1G cosine alpha equals zero. Now, solving algebraically, I just want you to, to remind this is not a system of equations, these are two separate answers, two range values of M2 for which the system will remain in equilibrium or at rest. In this first equation we have here we can divide both sides of the equation by G because G is a common factor <clears throat> and solve algebraically for M2. So for part C our first answer will be M2 equals M1 sine alpha plus mu sub s M1 cosine alpha and the other value for M2 I'm gonna put a little star right here will be the same M1 sine alpha minus mu sub s M1 cosine alpha okay this means for these range values of M2 if we if we fix M1 to be M1, so this M1 right here it does not matter as long as 
this M1 satisfy this equation, okay? As you as you know, as you can remember, we have one equation with two unknowns. The equation has infinite solutions, okay? So, as long as these two variables, M1 and M2, satisfy these equations, this will hold true. It does not matter the graf gravitational field the bodies are placed in. It does not depend on the centripetal acceleration of the body, okay, of the gravitational field. So, in the inclined plane, we have M1 and M2 right here. If M2 is between these two numerical values, the net force will never exceed the maximum static frictional force for the system to accelerate.